Welcome. In this tutorial, we will be looking at creating and making use of events to have executed inside of Sequencer to make sure that your movie moments have some kind of cool things uh, happening. So without further ado, let's just jump in and see how this is done and what we will be creating today. So this is essentially what we will be creating in this tutorial. So we have made this little makeshift uh, wall with a door inside of it and we're going to be invaded by a troll which is going to smash through here so we press a key to start a level sequence and in that level sequence we see the troll running through the door and smashing it open oh no disaster uh, so yeah this is what we will be doing in this episode so here we are inside of unreal engine 4 this is version 4.26 if you want to follow along it should be similar in Unreal Engine 4, uh, 5 as well, and in later 4-point series. So to create this effect, we are going to be needing a few things. Uh, the very first thing we want to do is go to Edit and Plugins, and then take, type in Apex, and then enable the Apex Destruction plugin, and then we will restart, and we'll see you after the restart. There we are, we have restarted now with our plugin enabled. So what this will let us do is essentially just uh, fragment our different meshes to have it look like it's being destroyed. Um, so to do that, this is a project with starter content in it, which means that if we were to go here and search for door, for example, you can see we get this uh, static mesh door. And this is what we want to make use of today. So. We'll make a new folder, we'll call it Sequencer, because we're doing Sequencer testing. <clears throat> we'll go back to the content folder and we'll drag our SM door into our folder here. So we'll copy it. Over in Sequencer here now, we can right click and because we enabled Apex Destruction, we can now create a destructible mesh. Uh, destructible mesh, you can set some different properties in here. And let's see if we can get a better look at this. So here you can set different values for how much damage it's supposed to take before it breaks and uh, caps and velocities and things like that to keep track of and make sure that it has the, the parameters you want to break in the way you want. We're going to be keeping this fairly simple in this one. So what we will be doing is just clicking on the fracture mesh which will give us a preview of a suggestion of how the mesh will be fractured. For our purposes this will be just fine. If you want to you can uh, play around with uh, how many uh, different parts you want it to break out in and, and things like that so you can uh, re uh, regenerate different kind of uh, breakages until you find something that you like. Uh, for our purposes this is like I said fine so we'll keep it like this and now you can see that we have been created a new asset here which is a destructible mesh asset bringing this into our world this is what it will look like and what we want to do is we want to have this mesh destroyed but we also want to have it um, affectable in easy ways for us for sequencer so for that purpose we're going to be encapsulating this inside of one uh, blueprint an easy way to do this is just to go over here to the blueprint add script button which will then ask us what kind of an actor we want and what we want to name it so we'll just name it let's say bp underscore uh, door destructible mesh That'll be fine, I think. And we'll choose select and compile and save. So now we have our blueprint over here, which represents our door. So we can now get rid of this destructible mesh door that we put in. Inside our blueprint, this is what we have. We are not going to be putting a lot of uh, logic in this, but a little bit. And one of the things I want to put in here is a sphere collision. And the reason I want to have a sphere collision is simply I want to have something that looks sort of like a sphere so I can get a sense of how it will be breaking because if I were to scale this up if I can manage there we go 
I can get a sense of how the shockwave of this explosion were to affect this door, for example. I can see that uh, if I have it in a different angle, I can see it with uh, the different uh, circles that are representing the, the sphere in whole. So this is just for uh, easy visualization for myself. We will also be making sure that this sphere is our point where we are actually uh, generating our damage from to break the door. So moving on, let's go to our event script. And first we want to just uh, put the logic in and uh, see that it works in a basic way. And for that to work, we will be playing around a little bit with a third person character and just picking up some easy events from there from our controller. An event that we will have in this blueprint is something we can call a custom event and we can call it uh, detonate to represent uh, the actual explosion happening that will fracture the door. And from here we can just do an apply radial damage which is an area of effect damage essentially like an explosion. And then you can have some base damage here. Well, we can just put it up. 250 should be fine. A radius for it to uh, react. So let's 200, which should be two meters, which should be okay, I think. Uh, and everything else we can pretty much leave empty except for the origin. Now the origin is going to be where the, the damage is being calculated from. So we'll drag out our sphere. We'll type in get location. And we want to get the the world location of the component in world space. So it's the scene component for the sphere. We'll plug that in. So now we have our actual logic happening, which is going to be detonating the, the door. So let's see if we can get this to uh, work. We'll put the door inside of our world. There will be fine. We'll find our third person character and go to our event script, we'll find some empty space, we'll just type in key, and let's use the F key maybe, something like that. We'll make it easy for us and just uh, find this uh, actor in the world. Uh, get actor class, we just want to find one, we know there's one. And we want to get the one that's called BP door DM. This door we then want to detonate. There we go. So now we should have everything in place for us to test. So let's close this down. And let's go in here and let's give it a test. So we press the key and it exploded. But we got some kind of lag there, so let's try it again. So pressing F, you can see now uh, the door is shattering and blowing away in a direction from the center of the circle that, or the sphere that we put in over there. So the basic test for this works okay. So now we can uh, continue to work on this. The next step is that we are going to be creating a, a level sequence so that we can have this like movie clip happening. So we'll do that. We do that by going up to cinematics and add a level sequence. We can put it in our sequencer folder and new level sequence. Uh, let's call it uh, destruction level sequence. So this is what we get. And what we need to do is we want to have a camera first. So we'll add a new camera. So we have that available here. And let's pilot the camera by clicking this button over here. Uh, now we have the pilot active over there. Uh, we can now do something simple just to see that we're actually playing the clip. So give us a, a sense of like uh, something's happening. So we'll do, we'll move to the end, which is 150th frame. Uh, we'll go to the transform and we'll set a keyframe over there. Then we'll get to frame zero and we'll reposition in some way this is dramatic sure it's over there so now we have a slight movement of the camera panning into the door uh, just so we see that the, the clip is playing 
From here, we want to actually now trigger our explosion to happen during this sequence. So what we are going to do is we're going to find our blueprints, which is this door. We're going to drag it over here, like so. And when we have it here, we are going to go to event and we're going to click on trigger, which will open this uh, event track for the blueprint. And let's say we want to have the explosion happen here. So what we'll do is we'll put a key. So we have a keyframe over here. We can right click on that. We can go to properties. And from here, we can go to the drop down that says unbound and we go to quick bind. And then from here, we can type in detonate. Clicking on detonate now will open up our sequence director which will show us all the things that it has here and it will create an event which is called BP door DM event zero just by default, it just generates a name. So we can start off by giving this a better name. So like uh, uh, door explosion, something like that. Actually, we can be even more specific and do sequencer door explosion so we know what it is. So this event by itself is going to get a reference to our object in which it's going to call the detonate uh, function that we did earlier. And it creates this uh, um, link immediately because we uh, chose that event over here. So it knew about which uh, object we were wanting to do something with and then we found the uh, function inside or actually the event inside of that blueprint. So then it made this connection immediately for that to happen. So it will trigger this event, which will then trigger that event. And now to have this actual sequence play, what we can do is we can go to our third person character and we can do the same thing we did before here, but instead now we're going to get level sequence. So we're going to get a level sequence actor. We're going to unhook this. And then we're going to say for this level sequence actor, it's going to do play sequence. So play sequence player. So now when we press F, what instead is going to happen in the game is that it's going to play this sequence that we created. And it is going to play through things that are happening along that sequence, which is the transformation of the camera. And hopefully if this is done right now, this um, event as well. So we press play, I press F, it does the event. And there the door shatters. So that is how you can create events happening in blueprints so you can get different functionality that you've already coded logic for in uh, to happen in the sequencer. But we can take this a little bit further. Get a door to be smashed open when a troll is running through it. So we're going to be creating a placeholder for the troll to symbolize that it's running through the door and crashing it open as it uh, reaches the door. And how we're going to do that is by first we're going to take our third person character and we're just going to duplicate it. So now you see when we start, we are playing this character. So the character on the right over there will be acting as our troll in this instance. And <clears throat> let's just reposition him a little bit. So we'll have him like so. Move him around a little bit. That is probably fine. So he will be moving from here to the door and the door will explode essentially. So we want to bring this third person character into our level sequence as well. Uh, we want to add a track for him. We want to add a track for his transform. And we want him to have this location to begin with and then have a different location for the end. And we can say that it should be over there or something like that. So the character will run through from uh, this location to that location. What we can also do is we can add something like a actor hidden in the game. So we don't actually see him before the animation starts. So we can set something like, uh, let's take the first frame and we'll set visibility to be true. And we'll have the zeroth frame visibility as false. 
So if we were to play this now, press the key, you can see it appears and it starts running towards the door. Super scary. And it smashes the door open once it get there, gets there. So now we could, if we wanted to, be uh, adjusting the, um, the door to explode when it actually is near the character, when the character is busting through, so somewhere maybe here. So we can take the event over here and we can drag it to that point. The point would be 112 approximately. So we drag it to 112. So now we can see that it's going to go there and then it should be smashing. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so it's smashing through the door, everything is fine and everything is looking okay. So this is one way to do it. Uh, however, uh, I want to show you a different way of doing this as well. Uh, before we do that though, we could uh, reason a little bit about the functionality that we've done because currently we have a event over here which we're calling uh, which is calling directly on the uh, the object on a specific function what we could have done instead is because maybe we have a sequence where we have a lot of different things happening and we don't want to have to call individual um, functions and events on the, all of these objects, we want to have something that makes it easier for us, for the, the sequence, uh, the purpose of the sequence. What we could do is, for example, we could create a blueprint for a blueprint interface. We can call it uh, sequencer activation. And then we go into that and we create a function here. We say sequencer activate. So then we could go to our door uh, over here and we could say that we want to class setting, add interface, API, sequencer activation. We can say we want to implement it and we get this little event for that. And then from here we could say detonate, for example. So that when someone calls on this, this door will detonate. That's, that's what it will do. Um, now to show that this is working what we can do is we can go back to our uh, let's see we want to go to our map and to our sequencer and we want to change this event from being uh, the door explosion we want to clear that out and we want to instead have a bind to uh, well we can go to our sequencer activation over here the sequence director over here. Uh, in this case, we know that we're going to be calling on a BP door DM here, but um, actually, I should not have removed this. Let's put it back. Uh, let's try like so. This is how we had it from the beginning Just to make it easier for you to show. Uh, sequencer. Detonate, something like that. Now, uh, the object here is going to be the same, but what we do instead of choosing this detonate function, we could just be calling our sequencer uh, activate, calling a message like so. So we're essentially calling to a blueprint interface saying, you should do whatever it is you want to do. And we have defined it in the, the door that when uh, that interface is called, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the detonate thing. So it's going to be working the same, hopefully, if I've not missed something right now. So let's try this again, just to make sure that it works. And it's still detonating the door, so it works. Uh, so essentially by doing this, you can have less specific uh, calls to different objects if you want to. So that, that's up to you if you want to do it that way. Anyway, let's move on to how you can do this in a different way. So we have this door DM and we might f have like existing functionality in this world where if you run to this door, it, it, you can bash through it. So we can actually make use of that. Uh, so if we were to add a 
box collision for example and then we make sure to scale this a little bit a little bit along that line a little bit like that and a little bit like that and then we can just reposition it okay that wasn't great positioning something like that with the point of if you enter this box collision you're going to execute the detonation in this case we can go to our event so here we can choose the on begin uh, overlap and from here we can just do detonates now to show that this is working what we can do is we can disconnect this event sequence or activate we can go into the okay that's that's not helpful Let's remove this character a little bit, like so. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's that's okay. Let's just do it like this. Um, where is he? Okay. Let's just. Hidden game, like so. Okay, he starts there immediately anyway. Okay. All right, we're okay. It should not be. Okay, like so. The level sequence being open uh, caused us some issues. Anyway, so um, now we have this door and walking through the, the the collision sphere will allow us to explode the door when we're doing it like this uh, we can also have that trigger with our level, level sequence now because uh, even though we have this event being called it's not actually doing something inside of the door because we deactivated the event but now that we have added the box collision we can have it so that we don't have to time where the character is it will just be when it reaches the door collision, it will shatter the door for us in that way. So that's another way to do this specific thing. Anyway, uh, I hope all of this made sense and I ho hope all of this uh, will be useful for you in your future projects. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.